Hello, I'm here with Tom and I've been playing Raiders of the Broken Planet. Uh, Tom, what can you tell us about this game, please? Um, Raiders of the Broken Planet is launching on uh, PS4, Xbox One and PC tomorrow. That's Friday the 22nd of September. Um, it's going to be free to download on all platforms and that will include a, what we call the prologue. And that's going to be the first two levels of the game. The first level is a single player only level and it's more of a tutorial. The second level is indicative of the rest of the game. Um, it's a level where you're saving one of the characters you're going to recruit and it can be played in single player or four player co-op. When you play four player co-op there's a chance that you'll be invaded and it will become a 4v1 match. Oh, so it's random, you don't know if it will happen or not. Exactly. So oh, you okay. only find out when the match starts. You can't be invaded mid-match but what, oh, what, right, okay. once you've chosen your characters if someone has decided, they could come in and they can try and troll you, essentially. Oh, okay. That's the idea. So you might end up having a really bad day in the game. Um, well, if you win, then it's, you get even more rewards. So oh, right. it's, so high, it's high risk and high reward. Okay. If you're playing as the one, the antagonist, obviously you're playing against four, four human players, so it makes it pretty tough. But at the same time, if you win, there's a separate kind of um, incentive to win okay. as the antagonist. Well, when I was playing, I thought it was going to be a bullet sponge kind of beat people up, but it's very, very challenging. You know, I found it very hard. So the AI is very aggressive in the game. Um, that is because they really want you to be playing in co-op. The level of the game is designed around that. Obviously, you can, you can play single player. I would say that if you want to experience the story, that's kind of what you really, really want to get. Do single player. Once you've kind of got that, start playing you know, in, in co-op as, as part of a raider team. And then once you feel comfortable with one of the characters, then it's a good time to try antagonist because that's kind of where the top level play comes in. Um, in regards to what we're doing in terms of platforms and stuff, as I said, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Any crossplay? Uh, there's crossplay between Xbox One and Windows 10, cool. and PS4 and Steam. We're really? We're, yeah, we're hoping yeah. to get Xbox One and Steam up and running as well. Um, we're kind of waiting on that to, to see when we can do it. If you've got a PS4 Pro, we'll be leveraging that as well. We've been playing it in, um, at a high resolution. Same thing if you're going to get an Xbox One X, this game will be supporting it as well when that launches. Yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, yeah, can you talk about the, just the story of the game? Yeah. So, um, as I said, the base game, the prologue, is going to be free. Um, we'll be launching campaigns as well. They're going to be 9.99 each. Campaign 1, Alien Myths, that um, comes out tomorrow as well. And then more campaigns will be released periodically. Um, in terms of the story, every campaign has its own story and they all run in parallel. So that means that if, let's say, in the future, Campaign 3 is just launched and you think, you know what, I really, I really want to try Raiders now. If you buy Campaign 3, which you can buy without having to buy any other campaigns, um, you're going to get a whole story there because the stories in Campaign 1 and 2 are happening at the same time and focusing on different characters. Um, if you play all four, obviously, then that means that you get more information about what's happening across the whole world. The sort of setting, the sort of um, scenario of the game, let's say, is that in the future, humans have found an uh, alien spaceship on one of Saturn's moons. Um, when they discover the spaceship... What, what year is this game set? Sometime in the future. I don't know. There's no, there's no okay. specific year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, everything is like the, the ship's crashed, but they, there's still some of the power source left. They use this power source with their own technology, and it lets them develop interstellar travel. And they want to get more of this power source because they, they, they want to essentially advance themselves. And that leads them to the Broken Planet. The Broken Planet, when they land there, there's an indigenous, indigenous population they're not um, a violent population, so the humans come in, and, as you'd expect them to, yeah. and think, why don't we take all this Aleph, that's the name of the power source, and you do do whatever we want, let's ignore the, other, the people that live there. There's one warrior there, Harrick. He um, rises up, and he decides that he needs the humans to go away because the planet will be destroyed if they take the Aleph. Because there's no warriors in terms of the indigenous population, he has to start recruiting mercenaries and different people from the human side. Um, and while this is happening, the humans start fighting over, fighting amongst themselves over the control of the Aleph. So there's a civil war on an alien planet. Harrick uses this to be able to recruit other people to fight against the humans. Hence the backdrop of the story of Raiders of the Broken Planet. Wow. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be a crazy adventure from there. Yeah, very crazy, complex story. Loads yeah. of stuff about civil wars, mercenaries. Yeah, I would say, imagine a, a pulp sci-fi western. Like the Magnificent Seven, but with 
insane characters and crazy powers. Well, yeah, let's talk about more about the characters. Because you've got antagonists and protagonists. If you can play it, you can play as both. And each character has a different power. So in the tutorial, I'm guessing you play as that uh, the initial Bible system. Yeah. Harrick, yeah. So Harrick has a sniper, very cool. But he has like this kind of walk ability where you can walk onto walls, onto the ceiling, which is very good. A feature that's not you don't see a lot in games. So you can shoot whilst you're on the wall and on the roof. It's the way I felt with the characters, I didn't get to play them all, uh, but it, Kind of, it lets you have your own play style. So if you wanted to just engage from a distance, then you can do that. But then of course you've got the challenging aspect of having to collect ammo from uh, the enemies. You can't just collect ammo for a crate, yeah. and you will eventually run out if you keep shooting. Uh, so you have to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so you've got that bit of a corridor where you have to make players do something specific. But what can you tell me about the characters? Yeah, so one thing worth mentioning, the same characters you can use as an antagonist or a protagonist. Okay. The story reason behind that is because there's a space demon called Uros Beherit who wants the Broken Planet to be destroyed. You find out why it's part of the story. He can essentially create like, kind of like A copy. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's why you can, exactly. Demon, do demon doppelgangers. Exactly. So you can have, let's say, the raider team, the four player raider teams using Harrick. The antagonists can use Harrick as well if they want. Now, in terms of all the other characters, um, we've got Part of the prologue, you're going to have Parrick, the sniper guy. You're going to have um, Alicia, who is part of the Umbra War Dogs. She's a human, and she's injected herself with Aleph to become more powerful. Okay. She can jump off walls, and she has a fast-acting shotgun. So if you jump off a wall and aim after the second jump, you actually slow down, and you can just pump people in the air with your shotgun. Um, you've got Lycus Dion, who you rescue in the second mission. That's part of the prologue, too. He is a cybernetically enhanced human. He's got like robot arms, he's got a triple shotgun, and he's got a kinetic shield. So when you use the shield, the more you move with it, the slower um, it runs out. So the idea is that his, he's a player, he needs to get in close. His shotgun's very powerful, but only from you know practically you know, point blank range. Yeah, so cool. the kinetic shield will, will let you run towards them and it will continue to generate until you get, you get the shot in. So you've definitely got players that are meant for the close combat with the guns yeah. and everything, and you've got players that are a bit more stealthy, a bit further away. Exactly. Yeah, very, very cool. The, the idea of the team is that you should hate some of the characters and you should love some of the characters. Otherwise, they they're all, not done they their all, job They're all right. very characteristic. When there's cutscenes, there are beautiful cutscenes in the game. They look fantastic. And I, well, the voice you didn't hear, but the fact that the cutscenes looked amazing and they all seemed that they had loads of personality, loads of character, which is good to see. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the team, the artwork, as you can see, is, you know, it's, all, it's a AAA team. It's self published, but they've, it's got a AAA budget. They spent three years on the game. Everything is proprietary, it's their own engine. They've really put a lot of love in this thing, and as it's self-published, this is a game which is their true vision. You know, no one's come in and said, "We think this won't yeah. work." We want it. To, we want it. This is the game they want to make, and that's also why we can do this um, campaign thing, which you know, ten nine one nine ninety nine. Sorry, you know, you get a product for free, nine ninety nine per campaign. You know, the barrier to entry is less. We're not asking for sixty well, pounds up yeah. front. You know and then I mean? season pass one, yeah. and then season pass two. Yeah, I mean, there, there is something called the founders pack, which is thirty nine ninety nine, which means that you will get all the campaigns as they unlock. But that you don't need to get that. If you just want to buy the campaigns as they come, no worries. And, and again, as I said, the prologue is free. But the second level yeah, yeah. that, you know, that, that is the true experience. Not in people that might not like the game. You give it one exactly. chance. Yeah. Uh, so you said that there was an online reward system, obviously it's an yeah. online orientated game, so what kind of rewards can you expect? So um, when you play missions, there's a chance that you'll unlock um, weapon blueprints. Weapon blueprints can then be purchased with in-game currency to, to get new weapons for characters. All the weapons are very different. Uh, one of my favourite weapons is for Lycus, the guy with the kinetic shield. He's normally got the, the shotgun. His, one, one of the shotguns he can unlock is a shotgun which can be shot vertically or horizontally. Dead if you space. remember in Dead Space, exactly. Yeah, awesome. Imagine that, but you've got a shotgun instead. Um, really, really cool for that. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, there's a kind of talent system, so you can buy new cards for your characters, and the cards, let's say the card will be, you'll, you'll reload 20% faster, all that kind of stuff. So you can buy new cards and shuffle your decks to get kind of special talents for the characters. Um, yeah, it's mainly that. You can also get skins and stuff like that. Those are purchasable with in, in real world, real world currency, right. not yeah. in game currency. No, no. Um, any, but any pay to win, like buy the best gun straight away and just kill no, everyone. Nothing like that. Yeah. Um, okay. You need to kind of play and you need to unlock them in game currency. You know, everything can change. Um, one of the cool things about the game is that um, the development is kind of live, so to speak. So when you go on the website, um, they've got something called the Raiders Hangout. 
and that allows players to speak among themselves but also feed directly back to the studio. They're taken on board feedback all the time. And let's say someone has actually, you know, we, we'd, li we'd like to have the option to purchase weapons without having to run the blueprint. It's something they could, they could add in. Right now that's not the case, but anything's changeable. And what they want is they want to develop the game with the community and build that community as yeah, well. It's nice to hear developers working with their community. You, know, you don't really get to see much of that, just kind of give what you get, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, how about the development? Where are you at the moment now? Obviously, you're about to release, but is there yeah. more updates? Or so, it's been in development for three years. To get to this point, we've got Campaign 1 launching uh, tomorrow with the prologue. Um, the plan is that there's a uh, first season, as we're calling it. Um, that's four campaigns. So, the second campaign should launch this year as well. And then the next two, campaigns three and four, should be launching early next year. After that, you know, if people really like the game, obviously we've got more ideas to do more. Excuse me. There are many more stories to tell, um, more characters, you know. The idea is this to be a base to kind of build up off and see where it goes from there. Tom, thank you very much for talking to me, mate, and best of luck with the game. Thank you very much. Cheers.